Um, I would suggest that you view and listen to this presentation after you've had a chance to browse the CPP website. And that web address, again, is www.cpp.com. And when you get onto the site, just follow the MBTI links, fish around, see what's there. There's a lot of information there. You can even uh, examine and download some of the MBTI computer reports for Jane Sample and John Sample. If you download those and take a look at them, I think what I'm going to say to you today will make a lot more sense. So let's start with that MBTI overview. I'm going to move on to the next slide here and uh, just show you a slide that I actually use in some of my workshops uh, to introduce the purposes of the instrument. You can see the first one there. It has some very practical beginnings, uh, putting Carl Jung's ideas about psychological type into practice. And the MBTI was done, started out by a mother-daughter team, Catherine and Isabel Briggs-Myers. Uh, and uh, you also see some reference, and I certainly make this point in my workshops, as to why I wanted to use the MBTI, because it can help increase self-awareness and self-perception, as well as increase the likelihood of appreciation for others. They're two very important uh, uh, aspects uh, of the MBTI. Let me move on to the next slide and just uh, make a couple of comments as to why the MBTI is so popular. Uh, it is one of the most used personality assessments in the world, and I think uh, a good part of that uh, is because of the aha moments that it provides for oneself and about others. Uh, I also find it very helpful to administer the MBTI and verify type with clients. And when I've done that once, I can use it for several different purposes. For example, I can use MBTI results for personal development and for individual coaching. I could also, with a group of people, if they all have their MBTI results from my work with them, we can also run a team building workshop based on the uh, MBTI. I can also use it for leadership and executive training and coaching and etc. So one administration of the MBTI can have multiple results. There are some key benefits to the indicator too, and I wanted to show you those on the next slide. <clears throat> Uh, that first point, the easy to grasp, insightful, and thought-provoking, it sure is. If you've ever tried to read the original Carl Jung, you'll know and appreciate what I mean by that first, uh, for that first bullet, especially uh, appreciate the uh, ease of use in those complex organizational settings. You can see also some reference to multiple languages, uh, and, uh, and there are lots of resources for the various applications of the MBTI. I'm going to show you a few of them today as we go through these points, uh, but you'll get lots more information from contacting CPP, either by phone or through that uh, CPP website. So let's continue on with our assessment overview. And I wanted to mention the four dichotomies, and that's on the next slide. Uh, so you, your clients, if they are taking MBTI step one, they respond to 93 items, and the indicator sorts their responses and makes some proposals about four different uh, dichotomies. This is all based, again, on the work of Carl Jung uh, around the turn of the last century, that is in the early 1900s. He made a, what at the time was a remarkable observation. He said that what appears to be random behavior going on around us is really not that random. There's some structure and some pattern to it. And when his work was translated into English in the early 1920s, Catherine and Isabel uh, noted this, uh, agreed with his, uh, with his research and his findings, and they added to and they fine-tuned his ideas to say that this not-so-random behavior actually has four themes that run through it. And they're listed there. You can see them. Energy source, information source, decision-making style, and lifestyle. And it's through the possible combinations of those, those four themes. You can see each one has two possibilities. Energy source has extroversion or introversion. Information source has sensing or intuition. And decision-making has thinking and feeling and lifestyle, judging and perceiving, and so on through the combinations of those, those possibilities, it gives rise to 16 possible types. So that a person with ESTJ preferences, for example, would have a, an initiating and outgoing way of 
approaching the world, that is the extroversion. They would have a pragmatic, fact-based approach to collecting information, that is that sensing, and a logical, impartial way of making decisions and seeking closure. Hence that ESTJ set of preferences presents a certain set of, well, style, strengths and style, and may even suggest some possible blind spots for a person with ESTJ preferences. So that's the basics, very basics of the MBTI. Here are some cartoons that I wanted to show you that illustrate those four dichotomies. Uh, on the next slide, the first one, this uh, cartoon, well, all of these four cartoons come from just a great resource for the MBTI. It's called Using the MBTI Tool in Organizations. It's a binder. It contains CD-ROM with a PowerPoint slides like the one you're looking at. It has scripts in there for what to say. It has ideas for how to set up an engagement with uh, an organization. Uh, it has um, uh, reproducible masters, if that's your preference, for um, putting together handouts and uh, folders for your participants and so on. Well, it also contains uh, these slides. This first one uh, shows, in a rather humorous way, the difference between uh, energy source. And one of the questions I ask my clients is, well, where do you get your energy and where do you direct it? Do you do this to the outer world of people and action or the inner world of thought and reflection? In other words, extroversion or introversion. And you can see our, our cartoonized extrovert there with a puppet on his hand wanting to talk things out. And that uh, person with perhaps introverted preferences sitting at his desk thinking things through. The next slide moves on to the uh, moves on to the second dichotomy, that notion of well, where do you get your energy? Is it through the five senses, and the here and now, and and the concrete and the details, and experience, or do you quickly get your information by qu moving past that into the sixth sense of intuition, looking for patterns, the big picture, possibilities, and future trends? And there you see our two, uh, our two folks wanting to see more data for the sensor and quickly moving past the data to say, hey, this looks like a great opportunity for the person with intuitive preferences. The next cartoon moves on to the third theme of uh, how do you make decisions? Is it through the, uh, the logic and the analysis and the impartiality of, and consequence-based thinking? Or could it be that you draw conclusions from personal values and things such as empathy and harmony of feeling. And there you can see two folks uh, arriving at a conclusion uh, at sitting at the table through different methods. And then that fourth dichotomy, that approach to life, is uh, illustrated by uh, judging and perceiving. Judging having to do with closure, planning, order, and control. And we could just move the slide on here. And um, could it be judging, or is it perceiving? Uh, <clears throat> that is the adaptability, flexibility, spontaneity, and openness of uh, wanting more information. So as I said, I use these four cartoons in my workshops to help people uh, think through these four dichotomies of the MBTI and pick which ones they think would suit them in their so-called shoes-off self and perhaps them at work. So these four dichotomies give rise to 16 possibilities. And the 16 possibilities are illustrated on the next slide. You can see the classic type table. And you can see in the upper left-hand corner, let me enhance the slide here with ISTJ, you can see a, a, a brief description for a person that would have I, S, T, and J preferences. And uh, the type table presents all 16 of the possible combinations of those four dichotomies. One of the interesting things about the type table, a very ingenious architecture to it, each one of the 16 types, for example, is different from the type beside it and around it by changing just one of the letters. And also, uh, one of the key messages from looking at a type table is, and you'll see it from reading the descriptions for each of the 16 types, that there are no right or wrongs in these dichotomous choices. They are merely preferences about, as uh, Isabel would have called them, habits of mind. 
So we use the type table a lot to organize all of this information and for use in workshops. This slide, by the way, comes uh, again from the, uh, the, uh, using the MBTI tool and organizations uh, binder. 